chemistry. And from Matthew chapter <laughs> 5, verse 9, uh, we lead them all together. So let's lead them together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Amen. Hello? Hello. Hello. Good Sunday. And did you have a good week? Good? Yes. Uh, so, weather becomes cold, uh, colder. So, please take care of your health. One day, I found some praise in the book I am reading these days. It says, If we put too much energy into one area of our life, the balance will collapse and we won't get anything. When I looked back on my life, I realized that I was neglecting take care of my faith. So I felt ashamed because I remembered the moment when I was putting my prayers and reading the Bible down because of my studies and works. Uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe any of you are living a life like this. So the important thing is that we must live without forgetting God in all our situations. I hope we have today's worship holding on this mind. We continue to share the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So far, we've looked at two fruit, and now we are moving toward mm, the third one, it is peace. When we are with the Holy Spirit, there is peace in our lives. But actually, we don't have only peace inside to us. Rather, we often feel more bad emotion, including irritation or anger. There is no calm wind in our busy world trying to survive. But the Bible says we can produce the fruit of peace. How can there be peace in our storming lives? We can find a very powerful verse about peace in the Sermon of the Mount of Jesus in the Bible. Jesus teaches people and mentions peace directly. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Jesus says that the one who makes peace will be called the son of God. It, in other words, the Son of God are those who make peace. But we know that Jesus, who is saying that is the true Son of God, so it means that Jesus introduced himself as a peacemaker. Then how did Jesus achieve this peace? The answer is through the events of the cross. Jesus died on the cross among the forces of the Jews, including people in Rome. But was Jesus really powerless to beat them? It makes no sense that the Son of God could not have had that ability. But 
Jesus beat their power through powerlessness among them. The power of the cross comes from this powerlessness. Jesus, who disabled all the powers of this world, brought true peace on this world. This event of the cross is foretold in the book of Zechariah. It, I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be, will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river <coughs> to the ends of the earth. This peace that Jesus achieved came not only in this world, but also in the relationship between human and God. This is how Ephesians describes Jesus' fulfillment. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. So, he was a true Messiah who brought peace to this world. Then, how can we achieve peace after receiving that peace? The answer is simple. As always, we have to follow the Lord Jesus' work. Just as Jesus was on the cross, we put our power and confront it with powerlessness. If we react in the same way among the many injustices and forces surrounding us, we will not belong to God but to the world. What we can do to all of people who hate and torment us is not retaliate against them, but try to embrace them with love. And then this is how we must pray. God, our enemies attack us, but we go to them by our powerlessness. Let our powerlessness overcome their forces and let their weapons be broken. Dear members of Hong Kong English Ministry, when we look at today's world, we see more hate and fight than peace. Each has a sword and a weapon in their hand and they try to kill each other. The war between Hamas and Israel breaks our hearts. People still have not repented of their evil mind. But Jesus calls the Son of God to those who make peace. And he sent us the Holy Spirit to the so that we could achieve that peace. We are those who follow the Lord of Jesus, and we call the place where we are gathered as the church. So, what the church has to do is bringing peace on this land. But is it right for such a church to attack each other? holding evil minds toward its people. As Christians, we must show the world the movement of making peace firstly. So, peace between people and people, between the state and the state, should be achieved through the church. Let us pray that people uh, that peace can be brought to this land and let's also pray for us to have a heart to achieve that peace 
When the church works for peace, I believe that the kingdom of God will truly come to this land. So may today's word be with everyone here who decides to follow Jesus on the Lord of peace. Amen. So let us pray together. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us and protecting us for a week and protecting our health in the midst of the cold weather. Every time you leave, we feel our lack, but more we depend on the great God. Please protect our way and let us be full of gratitude for grace on us. So we want to accompany the Holy Spirit and have peace in our minds. Let us make peace in the confusion of this world by powerlessness, like the Jesus' ministry of the cross. Show us our way in the storm under the light of the Holy Spirit and let peace flow through our hearts and spread throughout the world. As children of God, let us be the all members of English ministry who live in peace. We believe you will receive our prayers and requests gladly. Thank you, Lord, and love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.